to this very important session my dear friends we all understand the value of mice industry we all understand the significance of events exhibitions conferences the live events per se but it is very important for our industry to revive that our participants and precisely the customers of our customers come back to us and they are the visitors for that today we have a highly enlightened panel of speakers from all around the world we have industry experts who are going to share the words of wisdom with us as to how we can bounce back and how we can create the buzz back to our industry so that the visitors start to come in and the confidence is restored in the effectiveness of our industry with this i would like to welcome all our esteemed speakers I'd like to welcome mr david dubois president of iaee they have been doing a significant work to kick start our uh, our industry back mr balvinder singh sahani assistant secretary general fiki mr jay shankar uh, general manager cii um, we have with us mr sunil jain president of pmm ai plastic machinery manufacturers association mr rajan sharma managing director interacts exhibitions mr paul colston managing editor exhibition world and ms soridana sati secretary general aefi which stands for the italian association of exhibition industry i would like to thank all our distinguished speakers who have come here to to spare their i mean i mean they've shared the valuable into uh, insights with us and uh, they have taken out their precious time and with this i like to formally start the session i'd like to invite mr david dubois to come uh, to uh, to unmute please and please tell us what is the scenario of the live events industry you have been doing a lot of campaign of late since the start of the pandemic in, in fact and what is the significant uh, milestone which we have achieved through your campaign so far uh, obviously our entire exhibition and business events world has been uh, literally been put on hold uh, I'll give you a quick update uh, as of uh, today, uh, early September. Uh, obviously, uh, exhibitions and business events are open uh, in some places around the world, certainly Australia, China, Hong Kong, New Zealand, Thailand, and some of the uh, additional Asian countries uh, have slowly but surely opened up with success. Actually, some of the shows, uh, have about uh, up to 80% of their normal attendance, which is awesome. And then in the United States, uh, it depends on which uh, state or region, uh, but slowly but surely we're having some shows, but uh, for 2020, 80% of the shows have been canceled. An additional 10% uh, have been postponed to the first and second quarter of 2021. And, uh, just about 10% of the shows are actually taking place, but at, at minimum uh, occupancy levels. Middle East is, uh, continues to be shut down. I did read the other day that Dubai is, uh, uh, is very, very aggressive in their reopening. And I'm sure that Paul can uh, give us from the, uh, the publication side uh, some additional information about what's happening in the Middle East and Europe. And then certainly, uh, uh, Europe continues to kind of ebb and flow. Uh, there was some positive uh, efforts going forward, especially in Germany and then in the UK, but now due to the spike of COVID around the world, unfortunately, there's a lot of resistance to attendance by both uh, exhibitors and attendees. So that's kind of the current status. Um, hopefully full throttle. Uh, everything will be uh, open at a at a much more um, a much better volume uh, after the first quarter of 2021, and realistically, it's going to take some time to ramp back up again because 2019 was the best exhibition and business events um, economy ever, uh, and so we strive to get there again. Thank, Thank you, David, you. for those important updates. And uh, picking up some cues from you, I'll move to Paul. Uh, Paul, uh, please tell us some of the some of the insights from uh, the recent surveys and recent uh, work which has been done in the industry. UFI has been doing a lot of work. IAEE has been doing it. Uh, please tell us if you have some insights from various surveys and uh, advocacy measures outcomes. 
Thank you, Raghav, and uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, great to take part in this. Uh, I'm speaking uh, from London today. Um, yes, in our latest edition of Exhibition World, we covered the results of three major pieces of exhibition industry research. And of course, as David rightly said, it's great to see some evidence of, um, of regional shows coming back. And today, actually, Tarsus announced they'd run six exhibitions in five weeks in China, which I maybe come on to later as one of the case studies. Um, of course, our industry, like many others, has been hit hard. Um, but um, UFI's latest quarterly research certainly bears that out. The June barometer that showed revenues in our industry will shrink 60% globally compared to 2019, which we must remember was a great year, as David underlined. 73% um, of companies responding to that survey um, reported zero business for April and May. So we're coming back from a, a very deep uh, hole, uh, it must be said. Uh, and every second company in our sector, according to the barometer, has stopped all investments. Uh, so there are some definite harsh headline figures to digest. Um, Ufi's own research um, is complemented by GRS research, which um, was carried out among 550 global industry respondents, and that found that 89% of them had moved or cancelled at least one event due to the pandemic. So really hardly anybody has been untouched by that. Um, there are calls, of course, for government help from an industry that traditionally we haven't gone cap in hand to our governments before. And I think that's another indication. But as David's campaign and many other campaigns have tried to prove, we're asking for targeted assistance. And 71% of those surveyed by GRS said they need, they need government and public administration assistance, um, as 40% were not expecting a recovery in terms of revenues and number of international visitors to pre-pandemic figures before 2022. And the third piece of research just this week, coming from the Global Recovery Project, which is a collaboration by UFI, SISO and Explory, um, that came out last week and hinted that 13% of exhibitors only had paid to sponsor a third party online event. So maybe when we move on to discussing digital options, it's an indication in my mind of quite a low level of take up for that and we're still clearly in the learning process of how to monetize digital events. However, a start, of course, has been made there. Um, the research from Explory certainly showed that visitors and exhibitors alike rate live events more highly across almost all aspects, with networking seen as particularly a strength, and 77% of exhibitors and 83% of visitors state that face-to-face -face is better than online in this respect. So there's a strong show of faith in our core product. If I may add just one last sentence in this section about my own country, we're reaching a tipping point in the UK as, as concerns employment. So this is something that is really coming to the fore. With our government, it had a successful work furlough, furlough scheme that uh, funded 80% of salaries, including for our industry for several months reducing to 60% from October, uh, but that's coming to an end and there are heavy job losses feeding through. And our Meetings Industry Association in the UK says 126,000 event sector jobs have been lost since March in the UK. And even large exhibition uh, contractors such as the GES subsidiary Blitz, um, they've gone into liquidation and they were the main contractor at the NEC in Birmingham and Excel in London. So um, there, there's some serious problems there. And we noticed today that Pacific World has also ceased their events business. So um, coming from some, some strong blow, body blows, I think uh, our campaigns are vital and there are, are some good statistics on the horizon that we can come on to as we look to the future. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for those valuable insights. And uh, we all know that Italy has been through the worst of phases. I'd like to uh, address this to Lloyd Dana. Uh, Lloyd Dana, is, uh, is your association, is the Italian industry doing something to win back the interest of visitors 
and uh, if if it, if at all you are doing at this stage what are those measures uh, first of all uh, our problem are up to now was to reopen the exhibition because uh, uh, italian uh, exhibition were closed from uh, 24 of february and uh, opened the uh, 1st of september so for these six months our problem was to uh, convince the government to open again the, uh, the fair and uh, uh, what uh, what you have done to convince uh, um, the, the the visitor to come to the fair first of all for us it's important to have uh, one date for the uh, italy and if it is possible for the uh, at least for europe because uh, uh, really uh, the fair the government uh, agree to the possibility of opening the fair on uh, um, June, June 11, at uh, a regional cent basis, uh, according to the uh, epidemiological situation. But uh, this means that nobody open. So uh, people start to open the fair again and visitor to come and uh, exhibitor to come. Uh, only in the only when we have a, a date for the whole Italy, and if we have the date for the whole Europe or for the whole world, it's important for us. First of all, uh, we try to explain the rule uh, to attend to the fair. We have a, a, a governmental gu uh, guideline. Uh, line for the uh, safety exhibition and our association uh, prepare a protocol and during this month try to explain that uh, uh, this protocol um, let have the same security that we have when we go to the supermarket on a, in a shop or uh, any in any other place second uh, we try uh, to organize something to welcome people, uh, visitor uh, from abroad. And so uh, in Italy, the, we have an agency that is the Italian uh, a trade agency that uh, uh, prepare special income for foreign visitor. That is they prepare for uh, them, not only the entrance to the fair, but also a specific program uh, about the uh, in the territory they they go on the ter third uh, we have uh, this is for the exhibitor because we have to attract visitor but the main uh, one of the main uh, uh, situation to attract visitor is to have a good exhibitor exhibitor so for the exhibitor we have uh, loan at uh, low uh, interest rate and uh, uh, we have also tax credit for the participation of uh, it, uh, international exhibition in Italy and abroad. So in uh, Great Britain or in India, we have the same, uh, the same uh, uh, help. Uh, but uh, uh, so uh, this, this is what we have done up to now to encourage the, uh, the fair to go on and uh, uh, also the uh, exhibitor to, uh, to come and visitor to come. In our opinion, a campaign is important, but it's uh, also important to start because if people show uh, how it possible to enter in a fair, to enter in a stand, how we are organized, I think that they have confidence to come again with us. And uh, I hope that uh, this September go well. In this September, we have important exhibition in, in Italy, in the fashion sector, uh, in uh, other uh, 
also food and so and so we hope that with this situation we will they will uh, uh, encourage to enter thank you lloyd anna those were significant updates and you mentioned about confidence confidence is very important and with this i like to move to mr sunil jain who represents a significant association in india related to plastics industry sir please tell us uh, what are your clients saying about getting back to the exhibition getting back to the show floor you've been in touch with them through various forums since the pandemic what is their response to getting back to business in terms of exhibitions most of our kind of an exhibitions the major participation comes from the machinery manufacturers we're talking about the capital goods industry and capital goods industry in such kind of a situations is the first to be hit and the last to recover so there is a serious liquidity problem there is a serious profitability issue today you saw the numbers of gdp which the government of india has released the gdp is down by about 23% so there is a cash crisis today so exhibitors are not at all looking at spending money on promotional events and in this kind of a situation when you are out to cut expenses promotion per se is the last thing you want to spend money on you want to conserve your resources because you do not know till when the situation is going to last you want to spend money on the salaries of the people whom you employ you want to sustain uh, the uh, operations so times are challenging and most of the exhibitors currently are not in a mood to look at any uh, such expositions or spending money that's a fact of life it sounds very hard it sounds very harsh but that is what is the truth thank you for sharing your honest uh, comments on that and uh, we have one gentleman here mr rajan sharma who is a leading player in the industry in india and uh, maybe he is planning to expand his business and he can throw some light upon that that given this pandemic given the crisis what's the confidence level and what are your future plans because you seem to be expanding so there must be confidence not just uh, within you but also in your exhibitors and participants to get who want to come back to the exhibition show floor can you comment on this hello everyone uh, well to begin with as they say there are two sides to the story on the coin of course the, the, like mr jain said we have to face practicalities and the practicalities is is very tough time no doubt about it we are all going through a very bad time but having said that uh, yes we at internaz are going to expand we have a vision to uh, launch 11 shows pan india next year and uh, we are already looking at not only just metros but also tier 2 tier 3 cities because we believe the time has come that you have to take the horse to the well and the well will not come to the horse and the way things are going so this virus is giving uh, of course is the problem traveling will be one issue but having said that let me also uh, say like i heard from uh, paul or, or from loidana that the fact of the matter is that there are there are uh, the financials have been he helped by the governments be it in uk or be it in italy uh, so we need a subsidy having said that uh, we also have a very good news today which is the aero show being announced by the government of india in february now uh, we have to look at it in a positive manner also that when an aero show which is a flagship one of the big shows in india which is not only domestic but also international and the government has announced this show is a very very positive sign for february uh the only thing that we i will request the government of india is to share the uh, sops for holding such shows the reason being that the show that we run in the food business or in the construction business for instance and we are launching in agriculture as well the shows that we run uh, i must say that uh, the response from our exhibitor is yes we would like to participate in the shows uh of course given the fact that the things are what they are but the one question everybody is asking us is be it an exhibitor or a visitor is how are you guys going to do the show and whether what are the safety measures that you guys will take those are the answers which we do not have as on today and a show business is not like opening up a restaurant we say okay fine we are open for business and guys come in and you know dine in and dine out this takes time we need preparation time of 5 to 6 months minimum 
so uh, the the with the aero show being announced the sops should be shared by the government to to the industry at large so that we can take a referral value like uh, the lady said about italy that they are going to, sh to start shows in uh, fashion and food in september so those will become referral values uh, as to how a show successfully has taken place in india secondly the other thing that we have to do is uh, we have to also take into account that there should be a trial show being run by the government of india you know nodal agency being itpo they should do a trial show on their own we should become a referral of sorts of a successful show or they should let like high tech i am told was uh, trying to do a, a trial show themselves or one of the venues should do it now the fact of the matter is that the exhibition business as has been said very clearly by the report that paul shared with us that the digital has not been that great a success compared to the touch and feel factor the live events because that's where the buzz happens that's where uh, the networking happens that's where business transacts and this is one one tool one marketing tool coming i'm, I'm an advertising man and i or repeat time and again that uh during my advertising days we and media never ever in india suggested in our media suggestion of our exhibitor participation but today it has become the it's becoming in india as well the reason being this is the most economical most effective way of participating and promoting your product so in today's time when distress happens and when you're on a path of recovery so when which we will be at one point of time because uh, there will be a recovery of sorts will take place month by month we are improving if you look at it yes the gdp figures have shown very uh, very very negative because it is a fact it's a reality and you must accept reality but the other part of the reality is that there will be a better times to come and they will come so those are the times when they happen the exhibitor who is used to doing business is going to do business so our feedback is from our exhibitors majority of them want to come back to the show the only question is how will you take care of me and my team how will you get the visitors now <coughs> coming to the visitors <coughs> you know what we should do we should have an extra one or two days from the we should be uh, facilitated by the government and the venues for the organizers so that supposing i can't get 10000 guys in 3 days so i have to segregate visitors per day so the exhibitor is told look i can't give you any subsidy the way the italian government is giving subsidies to the exhibitors we in turn instead of doing 3 day show let's do a 4 day or a 5 day show so you still get your visitors to be you know interacting with them in the 3 4 day instead of 3 days 4 to 5 days now those things have to be done in a hand holding uh, fact with the venues and the government but in all overall i would say that the exhibition industry is going through a tough time but guys let me tell you one thing it's going to stay it's going to be in a very very positive when it bounces back next year it will bounce back big for sure but we need we need a government helping hand for sops from india specifically so that we can go back to the exhibitor and say don't worry you will be in in the show this is the way we are going to do the show this is the way we're going to get the visitors and uh of course it is the survival of the fittest at the moment of time so sure. we need to think positive about it very well made points uh, mr rajan <coughs> that our industry is irreplaceable and with this i have uh, deliberately you know kept this for the last uh, for this round to move to cii and fiki because these two associations these two bodies have been working since the lockdown and they have evolved into a hybrid model and taken it to a new shape i like to invite mr balvinder singh sani to tell us how successful have been his hybrid shows which he has launched since the uh, since the start of this pandemic and what are the trends going forward good afternoon and good morning and to, for various time zones hello to everyone and uh, you know good to see my co panelist from india and overseas and uh, really happy to share this panel you know uh, to be very honest i would like to start on a positive note that uh, i am personally looking forward to see normal physical ex exhibitions happening where people are meeting each other they are talking to each other you know uh, maybe doing handshakes and you know again and uh, doing lunches dinners networking that is the normal thing you know everyone likes so i i wish and i hope the vaccine comes soon and we all can do normal things 
now coming to question of raghav uh, fiki uh, took the first initiative of doing the virtual exhibitions we have started and we have done uh, two three exhibitions and um, you know surprisingly they have given very good results uh, to the uh, exhibitors the buyers uh, came from uh, you know uh, overseas as well as the indian participants they got they did very good business and we have learned from uh, you know the, the events which we have done and we, we will improvise on that but it doesn't mean that we are not going to get back to uh, physical events so january to march our uh, entire physical calendar is blocked few would be a new word uh, of hybrid which is being uh, pronounced by uh, 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 by our uh, commerce minister also is digital uh, you know half physical and half digital so the digital is the new word uh, which uh, our commerce minister also mentioned so we will have most of the things physical and as my dear friend rajan mentioned that you know we we, we can ask the government for some subsidy in terms of spreading the days number of days of the event so that you know we can follow the norms of social distancing keeping hygiene and ensuring the exhibitors and visitors both are safe and they do good business in the current dynamics so we are quite hopeful and the industry is so positive that you know they have evolved the sops have already already come i don't want to repeat things which my co panelists have already said so uh, i am quite hopeful but i feel uh, you know after learning from these virtual exhibitions that the digital will be the new uh, you know thing going forward but definitely as uh, time would evolve we will get the benefits of the digital world into the physical exhibitions by adding more value to both exhibitors and visitors in fact to all the stakeholders you know we as exhibition organizers will get better data better data management is going to happen you know uh, with more technology being used more interactions uh, can be uh, known and the uh, meetings which are happening you know what kind of business being generated so lot of things we will get the benefit but this will be a as i call this will be a homeopathic process not a allopathic process this will take its own sweet time so we need to uh, you know walk slowly towards that and ensure you know the the live events win that is my motto you know of uh, this if you have any other uh, questions raga i will sure. be happy to answer sure. that thank, thank you, you mr sani and uh, definitely you mentioned that uh, the virtual will complement physical going forward and i'd like to address this question to mr j shankar uh, mr shankar uh, we also know that xcon being one of the largest machinery shows has also uh, ventured into virtual uh, a lot of people have this skepticism how can we do a, a big machinery show virtual but uh, you have you have started uh, on that process tell us uh, how has been your experience on the online or the hybrid uh, the virtual events front uh, so far that uh, whatever events we have executed basically what we have to do is we need to look at exhibitions in a dual approach ye the world format exhibitions with the brick and mortar or the machinery sector and the new and emerging technology sectors what we are talking about the virtual shows however these things has to complement like my colleague balvinder has said these things has to complement each other and this should not be cutting across the other one but the challenge or the technology what we need to look at it how do we marry the old economy and the new economy so that is going to be a bit of a challenge in the coming years even though yes we have done good as you rightly said excon the largest construction equipment show of southeast asia we have done it in a digital format with around 300 odd exhibitors and that was launched by the uh, union minister of urban development that was a very good move over and about that ci has launched close to 35 virtual exhibitions and the response is of a mixed bag in terms of certain existing brands like excon and something on the auto sector or something on the railway sector the existing brands the response has been uh, pretty good whereas when we got into the new sectors the response is lukewarm because they companies are still have uh, try to understand what is this virtual format how are we trying to do but it's a mixed bag of response what we have got but however the entire process of doing virtual exhibition is to stay engaged with the company stay engaged with the membership and stay connected with the membership just today what is happening to, due to pandemic we are not able to go and meet our member companies we are not able to meet our customers we are not able to meet our exhibitors or we are not able even to connect to the visitors of various show 
So all that we try to do over the last three to four months is to stay connected with our membership and stay connected with the companies who has been supporting us. And that is one of the reasons we have launched all this platform to tell them, come on, we are, we are here to support you in your business. And we are here to stay with you during with the good and the bad times, whatever it is. So that is the thing to boost the confidence in the industry. This is the reason CI launched various virtual platforms today. See, but however, the real charm after doing XCon or after doing Auto Expo, the real charm happens only as you get into the ground, whether it is Pragati Maidan or BIEC or uh, the Noida Exhibition Center, see, IEML. So unless you get onto the ground, you don't really get the charm of doing an exhibition. That is what my guys are missing. All of us say, sir, yes, virtual exhibition is all good. We are all working, but the point is we don't get the real charm of actually getting into the exhibition ground or the fair grounds. That is very, very important for all of us to see how do we build the entire ground from ground zero to the show and the field we dismantle. Sometimes, most often, or 100%, we feel that when they, during the dismantling time, my team really cries. They said, sir, we have done a show and now it's dismantling. So those type of feelings which are missing, whether in terms of my colleague or whether in terms of my exhibitors or the right audience would come for the visitors would come for the exhibition. So that we act, we all of us miss that one. But that is something we all are looking forward to, like to see when do we convert, when do we get onto the physical mode and how do we get onto this? Probably uh, one of the things like uh, Rajan was been saying, or uh, Mr. Jain has been saying that, okay, government has to push. See, one of the critical thing which the government has to do, they have been giving a lot of stimulus to the MSME. But these stimulus doesn't allow them to participate. So that is one area because the most affected, if you look at the top 20% of the exhibitors, those are the camp, those are the MSMEs who are going to be very, very critical part because they play a vital role for the large missionary or large manufacturer without which they cannot survive. So there is something which the government has to encourage these MSMEs to participate because these are all the hard-earned money, unlike the other corporates where they have it's either the funder or the share capital, the shareholders. These are all the hard-earned money of them. So government has to really look at how do they promote MSMEs to participate. Where that is the backbone of the industry. And really, we need to pick up and strengthen the backbone. That is very important, both in terms of the recovery of the industry and recovery of the exhibition sector. Person. Very well said, uh, Mr. Shankar. And with this, I'd like to uh, go back to Mr. David Dubois. And uh, Mr. Dubois, uh, going forward, would we require to change our value proposition, to bring back our clients, bring back the visitors to our show floors? If yes, what would be the coming trends that you foresee will play an important role? This is my first uh, uh, Zoom call of the day. Uh, thank you, and, and, and certainly uh, our panelists have uh, contributed very good ideas. and. Um, I want to just emphasize what uh, many of, uh, of the folks have already said today is we have to build confidence. We have to build confidence in the attendee and the exhibitors uh, desire to come out of their homes, come out of their, what we refer to as bubbles of life that we've all been living in. And I want to emphasize and introduce the uh, realities that sanitation and protocols have to be followed very carefully by venues, by hotels, by airlines, by show organizers. And I uh, want to refer you to uh, two excellent uh, resources. Uh, on the UFI website, they put out uh, guidance and and protocols, as well as on the IAEE.com website, we call it considerations. And then I want to uh, ask the audience to write this down, gbac.org, gbac.org, that's Global Bio-Risk Advisory Council. GBAC is a division of the International Sanitation and Supply Association, a global entity that has developed uh, accreditation programs that are available to show organizers, to venues, as well as to individuals that will allow them to be accredited. For example, an individual on a show organizer staff 
can become a sanitation technician. It's a two and a half hour online program. Facilities can be accredited as GBAC STAR, GBAC STAR accredited facilities. Once again, I say this because it is a global program. It is not a US only program. Uh, right now they have 1200 applications in to the GBAC process of being accredited for both individuals, venues, and your show, by the way, can be accredited as a GBAC star accredited. So what we have to do, Raghav, is to um, show confidence that sanitation protocols are being followed, that we know what we're doing, we know how to space people. It's not mass gatherings. We're not a concert. We're not an outdoor festival where people are drinking and having a good time. Now, do we drink and have a good time at trade fairs? Absolutely. And we can't wait to do it again. But we need to prove to our governments and more importantly to attendees and exhibitors and corporations that we can put on and we can put on safe and accredited trade fairs and trade shows around the world. Thank you. Thank you, David. And picking up some cues from you, yes, confidence is going to be the key. A lot of people are going to be skeptical whether our industry can offer them good value, whether whether they should just log in virtual and do, do the needful. Uh, so I'd like to go to Paul and understand um, whether we, we are doing something at a global level to reinstate confidence uh, amongst our participants. Because uh, David rightly mentioned it has to be at a global level. Over to you, Paul. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Raghav. And um, I think it's important we remember we are one industry. And uh, to um, Rajan's point about the survival of the fittest, certainly our larger organizers have moved very quickly to slash costs and to raise funds in the money markets. And many of them will be all right, of course, in the long term. Informa raised a billion dollars. But we need to look at those people in the supply chain like um, smaller agencies that aren't getting paid. And remember, when we do come back, we're going to need everybody together. Um, in terms of uh, confidence, in, as Sunil and David, of course, mentioned, that, that is key. And ours is an industry populated by doers, organizers, entrepreneurs, people with a can-do attitude. And that has to um, trickle down. In Europe, we're getting many pilot shows, um, certainly in the UK. In Germany, although they have different rules and regulations in the 60 landers, um, there is movement there. And I think we can learn from these uh, events that are coming back and build confidence for people outside of our in events industry who will stage exhibitions. I'd pick out a couple of uh, exhibitions that are working nicely. Aquatech in China is actually on right now and they're using facial recognition. And I think that's a great confidence builder when you see uh, no cues at the entry and all of the, uh, the measures that David alluded to in the UFI and uh, IAE regulations. But we need to go further than that. We need to have tracking and testing, which in Korea at COEX and Kintex, they're doing 14 days after exhibitions. And that's a great move so that when you can prove your exhibition didn't lead to any more COVID cases, that is a great boost and a great initiative from um, Korea, which is leveraging all of its technological success to bring it into our arena. China now has been free of the virus for many weeks in many areas and exhibitions going ahead um, uh, in Shanghai today, as I mentioned. And indeed, they started on the 30th of April with the Hunan Auto Show. And we did a case study on that and how successful it was. Admittedly, you don't see groups of people going around those exhibitions. The exhibitions that have come back are not the same as they were before. Uh, they're more like um, the IKEA stores we have in Europe where you follow a route around and uh, meetings have to be organized one-to-one. Uh, -one. So I think we need to bear those psychological reasons in mind, as well as all of the hygiene and safety measures in the regulations by our big bodies. Um, Copenhagen Fashion Week has just occurred in August in Denmark, and that was very successful. And I think a metaphor for our industry stepping back out again on the events catwalk. And uh, again, they're showing 
tracking and tracing to prove there were no ill effects. Um, I might add also that um, the crisis has created a momentum to rethink and reshape our industry in ways that weren't conceivable before. So, um, you know, who could imagine that working from home would work on such a scale? And uh, we mustn't waste a good crisis, is a, a comment, I think, from Mr. Orlando in Singapore's events industry. Um, there's been a greater emphasis on charities and wellness. So I think it's given us an opportunity to, to rethink our proposition. But certainly we must convince other people out there to give them confidence in what we're proposing. Thank you. Absolutely, Paul. And uh, it's time to rethink and reshape our future. And I'd like to invite Loidana to comment on this, how, how, how the Italian industry is trying to revive itself. What are the trends going forward? Please unmute yourself, Loridana. I forget to, to give you, to you two information before. Uh, in Italy, uh, in, the, in six months, have been cancelled 88 international exhibition and 93 national exhibition. Uh, up to now, uh, our members have not received any, uh, any support from the government. And uh, we try to have support for visitor and for exhibitor, but we understand that the situation is difficult. In this moment, I think in Italy and uh, all over the world, uh, it's more convenient uh, not uh, don't organize exhibition than to organize one exhibition because we have more cost and surely we have less result than in the past. But I think we must go on because uh, only if we work, we can show that uh, it's possible to organize FEA is even in this situation. And uh, uh, only organizing FEA, only working, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, show that uh, the re we can help the economy of our country and we can help economy uh, of our sector and of our, our country. Uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this time, we speak uh, uh, sorry, uh, about uh, economic level, we speak about the policy of Keynes, the public support to the industry. Uh, I think that it's important, important also the role of expectation to improve our situation and uh, the fair can create positive expectation for uh, for uh, our sector but also for the, our the wool industry and the wool economy this is to uh, to say that in this moment uh, i am not sure that exists uh, uh, one rule one possibility to create uh, that what is the how we can create value. Uh, but I am sure that it's important that the fair work because the history showed that we are, are important, are important to develop the economy, are important for the social cohesion. Uh, one of the risks is that we work in our house, we work uh, in a tribu but not in a society. So the fair is open to the society. Uh, we are important to enhance our territories because people that, uh, uh, the people that uh, goods from one country, go from one country to another are not uh, uh, only transfer products, but are transfer culture, are transfer cooperation, are transfer new languages and uh, it's also important that for the uh, creativity because in the fair that the creativity uh, thanks to the uh, meeting with uh, visitor exhibitor became possibility or new or new work and new uh, new turnover and new employed for our country so i have no a specific idea idea but i am sure that it's necessary to open to the young 
uh, today I'm to show you uh, their uh, vision of the world. It's important to continue to promote relation, but a relation uh, that can arrive to uh, to a products, to, no. to activity, to, to a work, not only uh, um, in relation uh, to have the relation. I, I am not uh, sure it is clear. We have, uh, and uh, another thing, we have a focus on which is country can do best. Sure. Not at the low price, but uh, all the history of the economy is playing that uh, uh, each country have a specific function. I, I think in that and summarize, I think that we cannot uh, uh, live without working. So we have to work uh, and work in the fair can help all the world to work, to work better. In so, this period, we need to work for our country, for all the world. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for your valuable input, sorry, Dana. And you rightly said we have to add value to our industry so that it's uh, it stays relevant. Well, well, um, uh, I'd like to move to Mr. Sunil Jain. And Mr. Jain, uh, you did have your uh, doubts regarding our industries reopening and whether the participants would like to come back uh, soon to to the show floors. Uh, you have your own reasons, uh, uh, but I'd like to ask you. Uh, what as an association as an organizer are you doing to engage with your participants with your clients with your members at this time okay before uh, i answer that uh, raghav i hear a lot of uh, um, thoughts being expressed by other panelists in terms of getting support from the government uh, even developed countries like uh, doradana mentioned about italy they haven't received any support and are asking in the Indian situation, asking for the government to come up with any support, I'm sorry, it is not going to happen. It's a utopia. So let's accept that instead of, I remember uh, Raghav in one of your sessions three months back when ITPO and uh, people were involved, this thought was suggested. And I believe a memorandum was also given to the government. Let's understand the government has better things to do. A, the government will do populist measures, not concerning the industry, not concerning the people who they think have money. So let us accept that and let us build our uh, strategies, assuming that there will not be any support from the government, number one. Then what are we supposed to do? What does an exhibitor look for? Exhibitor looks for value for money. When you say value for money, it's the return of investment. So exhibition organizers, even like ours, the association and other organizers who are here, they need to find ways and means of giving better returns to the exhibitor, which means you have to cut down your costs, which means you have to negotiate hard with the venue people. Because if the venue people want to make money, they have to hold exhibitions. You have to use your bargaining power. You have to use your strengths to reduce expenditure. The contractors or other associates who are involved, they have to work together. Let's talk about reducing our margins. We should look at turnover. We should look at how we can increase our bottom line. And most important is how we can sustain. The, the challenge today is to sustain. Many people will die. Let's accept it. As Mr. Rajan rightly mentioned, is a survival of the fittest. So let us accept it. That a lot of people are going to die. And it's not only in the, the mice industry, it's happening in all the industries. It's happening in all the service providers, all the service providers. So let us accept that. So let us build our strategies around not expecting anything from the government, how we can reinforce ourselves, how we can collaborate with each other. So that's what we should be looking at. To ask a specific question, how we are engaging with the exhibitors. Uh, let me talk about our industry, which is the plastics and packaging industry. We know that this year is a challenge. We accept it. So we are only looking at ways, as I mentioned earlier, to conserve cash and to be able to sustain this financial year. Having said that, we are very, very optimistic that next financial year is going to be a boom. At least I'm talking about our industry. We already see uh, symptoms coming in. We already see indications coming in. So let us prepare for that 
I wouldn't call it the new normal. I would call it the old normal, which will come in. So let us prepare ourselves for that. And we've been engaging with our exhibitors. Everyone has the same view. The basic thing which everyone keeps on saying, we need to reduce our costs. We need to reduce the cost of the overall cost of participation. When I say overall cost of participation, it's the venue, it is the contractors, it is travel, it is the hotels. And let us understand all these people are under pressure right now. So you need to negotiate hard. So the emphasis, whenever the new uh, exhibitions come in, whenever we are able to hold the exhibitions, we should start working right now itself towards that objective. So that's the input I would like to give. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Jain, for your comments. And uh, with this, I'd like to go to Mr. Balvinder Singh Sani and uh, understand from him how ROI centric have been the virtual events so far. Are, are they are they uh, reaping in good uh, business orders for for your uh, participants, or they are more for for the uh, driving the communications and keeping on with the engagements? What is the purpose of organizing these virtual events? See, uh, Fiki being uh, the industry association, uh, similar to what CI is, all the industry chambers are doing uh, virtual exhibitions not for the purpose of making profit. To be very honest, it is the idea is to. Uh, keep uh, the MSME uh, connected, you know, so that the export growth and B2B meetings keep happening. And this could be, uh, you know, uh, country specific, product specific, or uh, this thing, the idea, uh, you know, if you will look at the percentage of a virtual exhibition, uh, if you will compare with uh, the normal exhibition, I think uh, the revenues are not even 10 to 15% of a normal exhibition. So we, we can't really compare ROI and this thing. So uh, the idea of all the chambers which are doing this is for our membership and our membership can then be connected uh, to uh, buyers in India and overseas. That was the main purpose, not definitely. And definitely we, we, we are trying to definitely break even uh, or, or be in some uh, cash surplus for uh, taking care of the overheads and uh, we all are seeing a lot of cuts happening across the industry. Cost is being cut. Paul has mentioned about that. So, uh, you know, we, 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 we are just trying to survive. That's it. Okay. It is not about uh, making money at this point of time. No, with ROI, I meant uh, that are your virtual exhibitions driving the momentum of business for your participants? Are they getting orders? Definitely, definitely. That is the, in fact, I told you even I was surprised uh, after the first VHHE Virtual Healthcare and Hygiene Expo, a lot of exhibitors came back and they said, we want you to do another exhibition and we, we also want you to do company-specific events wherein you can uh, do B2B for company-specific seminars, webinars and uh, virtual B2Bs. So they are getting uh, good orders definitely in the industries where things are looking up. I'm not talking about uh, industries uh, you know, things like tourism or uh, hotels or, you know, where uh, things are not okay right now. So I'm Absolutely. talking about industries like, you know, healthcare, FMCG, supply chain expo. They are the uh, exhibitors and visitors showing good interest because they Absolutely. want to get connected with yes. the last yes. yeah, that's it. Absolutely. And this is Sabar, where the role Sabar, of... If I may just uh, add a, a, a comment to what Balvinderji said. Sure. See, uh, there was been a lot of talk about virtual, digital, and everything else. So let us understand there is no comparison. The virtual exhibitions are not substitute for physical exhibitions. They can be complementary. So it's a new uh, platform which has emerged. It can complement uh, uh, physical exhibitions. But there's absolutely no substitute of physical uh, exhibitions. We need to understand uh, a human being is a social animal. You want to hug each other, as rightly said, we want to... Uh, you know, shake each other's hand. You want to, what you see behind me is one of the machines which we is, is displayed in Germany. People want to see the, the magnanimity of the whole thing. They want to see the scale, which is definitely in a machinery kind of a show, definitely not possible in digital exhibitions. So the digital exhibitions can be a complement to the physical exhibitions, but there is no substitute. Yes, and I, they, they, Raghav, they have to I In fact, uh, in Raghav, fact I, I agree just, with uh, Mr. Jain. Like when the websites came in, they said it's going to hit the exhibition industry this 20 years back. Then subsequently, 10 years back, they said we need to have a mobile app. Now they, we are talking about virtual. But what has happened? Website remained as part of the exhibitions and did not take 
Now, each of these become a component, like what had happened in the exhibition. They started promoting the website in the stall and the mobile app. So companies have started saying that, okay, this is my website, but if you want further more quick access, go into my app. But however, the company's been in the system in the exhibition, nothing has changed. But the physical format remained the physical format. Same is the case which will continue to happen in the virtual format, where the physical, uh, virtual, and all these things will coexist. Sorry, Balvinder, if I had cut it off. No, no, you, you made a good point, Shankar, my friend. I just wanted to say, you know, uh, for, uh, uh, you know, Leodano that, you know, in Italy, uh, uh, Marmomac Verona is one of the largest stone exhibition in the world. It is spread over 100,000 square meters and all the halls of uh, Verona Fiera are full. So that is going virtual this year, but the look and feel can't be what happens in a normal situation in Verona wherein people attend the exhibition for full day and then they go to uh, arena for dinner or they go to Juliet's house in Verona. So that cannot be, you know, replaced. So, but, you know, as the situation is right now, even uh, exhibition like Marmomac has gone into virtual space, but definitely next year, Verona Marmomac will be uh, in a physical space only. So my point was only, it is only for time being, uh, you know, it will be, uh, fidgetal, as I've said, you know, the, and what Shankar said, this will only complement whatever we uh, learn from the virtual arena. Yes. Over from my side. Thank you. So, uh, my question to Mr. Shankar, uh, the, my focus question is that you have to suggest two measures that we have to take to reinstill the confidence of participants in our industry. We got to uh, tell them that the exhibitions are back and you're going to regain your business as everybody is saying that it's going to bounce back. And we have to really prepare exhibitors and the visitors for what is going to be happening, what's going, how it's going to bounce back. And we have to really prepare them for the entire thing, what the transition is going to take post-COVID. We really have to prepare them. We have to prepare the exhibitors in terms of change your way the displays are done, be innovative so that you're able to get the right visitors to come. And from the visitor's perspective, you've got to say that something new is going to be, you're going to see something new, which is going to be exciting, which is going to make your business grow. So these are two things we have to do from both in the exhibitor side and from the visitor side. We have to make exhibition really class apart to say that, okay, this is something we are bounced back. We have to, we have come back to show you something new. Unless we come back, then it's going to be a bit of a challenge because we need to give them a real good experience. Like going to a theater after six months, you have to really give that experience of the theater, similar thing we have to do here whether it's the venue who's going to do it, whether the service provider is going to do it, or the company is going to do it, or the organizer is going to do it, but it has to be a collaborative effort to give the real good remodel or repackaged exhibition which really draws attention. And uh, Mr. Rajan, I have, to, I have to take your honest answer in this. As a leader in homegrown exhibitions in India, what is your take? A lot of people in the industry are skeptical whether our industry will survive or not, whether we have a future also or not. Being a domestic organizer, leading organizer uh, in India, what do you have to comment on this? Whether we will brace through this because we have 9/11, we have had a lot of, uh, we have had dot com uh, 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 coming and uh, you know disrupting, but st still our industry prospered. So can we can we uh, prosper through this phase? Are we going to come back? Raghav, to be very honest. Uh... This is one industry in the world. What is the exhibition industry? We are the thermometer of the economy. If the economy of a particular industry or industry is doing well, then that exhibition will do well. If the exhibition, if the industry, let's say the, let's take the automobile, for instance, right now, automobile is not in a good shape. So obviously the ex exhibition will not do well, but when it does, Automobile does well, the exhibition does well. So the point is the, the light touch and feel factor can never ever be replaced. Like Mr. Jain said, human being is a social animal. We guys need to interact. Uh, we need to physically see the product. You can't buy uh, machineries worth crores or rupees. I'm not against virtual exhibition and I agree with Shankar and Balvenda that these are value adds because times are such that new things come up at times. 
whether it's virtual dot com 911 all those things have happened in the exhibition industry has always bounced back with a growth not with something where you know all these things that you mentioned they happened but the industry only grew this virus is has been something which is completely unexpected so once once this settles down by by virtue of the vaccine coming in by virtue of things settling down to normalcy it might take months or one year or whatever but once it settles down the exhibitions are going to bounce back hugely and there's a simple logic for it the logic is that the it's a trial and tested method over decades centuries rather it it is the one of the oldest trading tool that has taken place in the history and continues to only grow across the world it is the only it's like cricket in india which is which is always looked upon as the best thing happening so you name one show whether it's excon or whether it's an auto expo or you know talk about any big show that you're talking about people would like to miss if they are in the business so you have to be seen in such shows because it's not because of anything else because it makes commercial sense and it is the most economical way of doing it okay today we are going through a time you know the only ones everybody is going through it but yes the unfortunate part is the reality is that the survival of the fittest like mr jain said i feel very pained when i hear that so and so company is going down shutting down but what can you do people like us can sustain with god's blessings but what about the others that's where the government subsidy needs to be we need to it's high time for us to tell the government please recognize us please think about us maybe they will not like mr jain say forget about it they got better things to do i agree with you but at least for the future because my only thing is we will survive the industry will survive the survival of the fittest will happen but i reckon to be very honest a majority of the people will be wiped out because they don't have the surviving capacity so let's be honest about that and like uh, shankar said that we need to be innovative we need to be collaborative that is something which we need to do that okay fine like you as a media is doing a fantastic job by spreading the word around we should also be holding hands to our vendors and similarly the venues i don't expect i'm like a itpo with due respect to them have given us 20% discount that is nothing it is actually a drop in the ocean it, it is nothing if an, as as an exhibitor if i tell them okay uh, you know i'll give you four days or five days of uh, your show time and you can meet more uh, visitors he'll say okay thank you very much but don't expect him to pay you extra money or for that matter he's a, 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 again going to look for discounts even now so we don't have the he doesn't have the subsidy coming from the government we don't have the subsidy to give it to him so the venue has to help us like uh, mr jain said if there are no shows venues will go bust but the fact of the matter is that some of the venues are subsidized by the government but are are we as the organizer i work with an international company i work uh, do shows where we are planning to launch new shows with new partners in next year provided everything is fine but we need to be uh we'll go through it we'll come back with a bang but we need to also just start look at ourselves that i will survive doesn't matter but what about the others who will not because it's all about us like paul said we are one industry worldwide it's it's called the exhibition industry it has no other language except it's called exhibition industry and we mean business because we do business very well said and on those words uh, i would like to thank all our esteemed speakers who have taken out time to share their words of wisdom with us i'm sure that the attendees have gained a lot and they've put their questions in the chat box do visit our speakers lounge also and uh, have fun for the rest of the event thank you very much